Now some logical operators, symbols and the meaning. Not, that is the exclamation sign stands for logical not and stands for logical and, it's an and operator. The pipe symbol, that is the standing straight line stands for the or operator. Less than, we any one know what less than means. Less than equal to is that it means it's less than or equal to. Similarly, greater than, greater than equal to, equal to, equal to. We'll do a check whether the left hand side is actually equal to the right hand side of this operator. Not equal to does a check whether it's equal to what is on the right hand side. So if you have a four is not equal to five, it is going to basically check whether these two are similar. If it is not similar, it will return a true because that is what you intend to check over there. And if, if it is four, if you're passing 4 not equal to 4, it will come as false. Why? Because when you're saying not equal to, actually they are true, right? So you're giving an opposite condition, so it will return your false. The double AND sign is AND with an IF and the double pipe is an OR with an IF, right? That's how you'll have to see it. But from the notion of vectors, it also talks something about ve vector recycling. The pipe double pipe stands for an OR with an IF. Now again, the notion goes similar to the double AND operator. So uh, if a s double AND basically means that you don't want the vectors to recycle and a single AND means that you want the vectors to recycle in case they are not of equal size. So when you say a vector A and a vector B and you try to just do an operation, if one of the vector has two elements and the other has five, if you use a single AND, it will not do the vector, it will do the vector recycling. If you do a double, it will not do the vector recycling. That is what is the meaning. And XOR XY stands for exclusive OR, right? So basically an exclusive OR comes into picture when a statement will be marked as true only with only if one of them is true, right? So if both of them are coming true, it will be marked as a false. If both of them are false, anyway, it's a false statement. And each true statement will check as to whatever uh, procedure you have passed in that so you have done a, a complicated formula inside that it will just check whether it is coming true or not now let's come to some sequence generation now we have already done this with the form of 1 to 5 sequence and 5 to 10 just that we will be seeing it from the perspective of a sequence generation now if it's a regularly spaced sequence that means they're equidistance right we can use something like a sequence operator and we can say 1 colon 10 and it will create a sequence from 1 to 10 but ideally you can say that 1 colon 10 also does the same job right but there is a difference now this function lets you decide contrary to the previous sequence wherein you did not use a function but just said 1 to 10 which does not let you decide what is the gap which you can keep between these right it's assumed by default that that's supposed to be 1 when you're using a sequence function it gives you the flexibility to specify how do you want to separate the sequence? So if I say in the previous line, sequence 1 to 10, if I say comma and I say 2, so what it will do is it will first give 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and so. So it will separate it by 2. That's what is the meaning, right? So in this case, where in sequence 0, comma 5 says that the number should start at 5, should end at 5 and this and the and the amount or the magnitude by which the increment should happen should be 0.5. So the sequence is 0 0.0, 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5 and so on. Similarly, you can do a reverse sequence by saying sequence 5 comma 0 comma minus 0 0.5 and it does the reverse. So we are through with the sequence generating part. Now we'll jump into the next part generating repeated sequence so the rep which stands for replicate it's a replicate function so basically you're trying to repeat something so x allocation sign rep 6 comma 4 right so you're asking the rep function to basically repeat 6 4 times right so that's how you will see this so if you say rep concatenation function 11 comma 12 comma 13 comma 3 so it will repeat the sequence 11 comma 12 comma 13 three times so that's how it is coming 11 12 13 11 12 13 11 comma 13 if you say rep 1 colon 2 three times it will do 1 comma 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 that's how we'll see it if instead of just passing the second parameter as a value you say each equal to 2 it tells the algorithm that repeat each element two times and then create the next one so that's what we see so rep c 11 comma 12 comma 13 comma each is equal to 2 tells the rep function that you want each element of the vector that is 11 12 13 to be repeated twice 
and that's how it becomes 11 11 12 12 13 13 now we come to sorting ranking and ordering that aspect of handling data so say for example we want to sort some data so what we can do is we can first create a vector say sales allocation sign c 100 comma 50 comma 75 150 all of them are not ordered in a sequence now if you want to just rank them you can say rank allocation sign rank and the same variable or object r is one such language wherein you can use the same uh, object for self-referencing also so that means you can write sales again back to the sales object but that's dangerous for now you should only do that when you have good hands-on experience with managing objects in r so when you say rank allocation rank sale that where it get ranked then you are saying sorted right if you say sorted that's the object name you're creating and you're saying allocation sign sort sales it will sort it in increasing order right and then when you say order it will just put it bases the order so if you want to see this when we we can just merge it back to a data frame so you will say v i e w an object you're creating in a vector uh, not in a vector form but all of these rank sorted and ordered are basically vectors now i'm going to write this back into a new object but you want it in a data frame form uh or be a little bit uh what i can see over here the d is with a d capital it won't get executed because this function won't be found you have to write d with a cap not with a capital d but a d with a small letter data dot frame should be in small caps and then you will pass the object sales right so you're saying sales and ob obviously you have to be very careful with handling the alphabet so sales which you have created initially is sales with a small s and what you're passing over here is a capital s and it will throw an error so you'll have to make sure that this is sales with a small s and rank with a small one and all of that goes in the same order all of them has to be in small caps otherwise it will say object not found and then you will put that over here and this is how your table will look the sales is the basic number in the unsorted form rank is where you have given some ranks to the data right and then the sort wherein it is created in any decree in, uh, small to large number sequence and then there's the ordered category